Welcome once again to Shelf Life Online. Uh, this, this time I'm bringing to your attention two books, one fiction and one nonfiction. The nonfiction book is American Serial Killers, The Epidemic Years, 1950 to 2000 by Peter Bronsky. This is published by Berkeley and it retails for $36. Um, a lot of people like true crime books, um, but um, you will enjoy this, but you also have to have um, a rather deep stomach because um, the author holds nothing back. Uh, he talks about some of the greatest, and, and I use the word, well, figuratively, <laughs> greatest serial killers of the second half of the 20th century, such as John Wayne Gacy, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, Ted Bundy, uh, Ed Gein, and many more. Um, they are really the who's who of serial killers, though he does mention quite a few others who are not as prominently remembered. Uh, he also talks about how the term serial killer was coined. Uh, it was in the latter half of the 20th century that that term came about. And basically serial killer, um, someone gets the designation if they kill two or more people. That, that's just a designation of serial killer. And uh, in this book, uh, he talks about the, the whys uh, and the wherefores of why some people kill many serial killers for example, have had very difficult childhoods, which of course is no excuse to go out and kill. Uh, they also uh, have been abused, they've seen abuse, and um, they have had um, a difficult time. Now, of course, not everybody who has had a difficult life turns into a serial killer. It, it is a very select few. And, but Vronsky does get into deep psychological terms as to why people kill, and um, like I said, it is very graphic. He holds nothing back in his description of people who cut up body parts. Um, they dismember them, you know, and some keep the head um, as a trophy. Um, they keep the head in, in the room for pleasure. And um, others eat body parts, and he gets very descriptive with talking about eating, eating body parts. I won't tell you what parts he talks about eating, but it is uh, a book that Definitely, while it is fascinating, at times it's also um, stomach-wrenching. But if you are looking for a true crime book, this is sort of the ultimate true crime book where he talks about the golden age of crime. That's a term that's used between 1950 and 2000. It is definitely graphic, and um, for those who like true crime books, this is very highly recommended. The second book of note is The Kingdom by Joe Nesbo. Joe Nesbo is a very familiar name in the world of um, crime fiction. Uh, he is from Norway and his claim to fame is 12 books in the very very popular Harry Hole series and um, he he's written a few standalone books and this is not part of the Harry Hole series and by the way it is published by Random House Canada and it retails for $34. Um, in this book is, um, it's well over 500 pages, it's 550 pages, and um, he, uh, the book is about two brothers, Roy and Carl Opgard. And um, Roy is the older brother, he's very protect protective of his brother. Um, there's been cases of um, abuse, sexual abuse, and um, we basically, um, you know, look toward um, the parents. So. Uh, anyways, um, the parents suddenly die. Their car goes over a cliff, um, their coupe de ville, and um, they die. Now the question is, um, police think it was an accident. There's also suicide that they went off the side of the road. But there's also the possible thing that foul play was involved. But anyways, Roy and Carl grow up. Carl leaves. Um, his hometown and he goes to the States, he gets an education there, then he comes to Canada, then he goes back to his hometown to reunite with Roy. But Carl has gotten married to a girl named Shannon and Carl wants to rejuvenate that hometown with a hotel which would be called The Kingdom, hence the title. And so anyway, what we see here in the book, uh, it, it fluctuates between past and present 
and we find out what happened in the past, the parents' accident, and we see the brothers. Um, Roy is um, seems to fall um, in love with um, Carl's wife, Shannon, and they do have an affair, and uh, that that's a very interesting dynamic. Um, she tries to fight her feelings for him, and, and of course Carl does not find out. But as we find later in the book, there is a lot more going on, including other murders, which could uh, bring Roy and Carl into the picture as well. So it's... Um, when Joe Nesbo writes, he um, it is more a character-driven book. Of course, there is a little bit of action, but it's the character-driven storyline that that really keeps us reading. And when you have 550 pages, you have to have something to keep um, the people interested. And uh, Joe Nesbo does exactly that. Uh, there's another interesting murder at the end, which you did not expect. And so it, it makes us think of just what went on with these two brothers, why Carl was the way he was. We know Roy was, a, was the way he was. Um, in fact, uh, the book is actually um, narrated by Roy for the whole book. So it, it is a very highly recommended book, full of surprises. It will keep your attention. You won't get bored, even though it's over 500 pages. So that is the second book this week that I just wanted to draw to your attention. So hopefully you will seek out these two books that I mentioned when you will go to your local bookstore and you um, make up your book list for the month or the week or whatever. So as always, thank you again for watching. Uh, I hope you will come back to watch the next videos in the series. I hope you'll also go to YouTube and Facebook Shelf Life Book Reviews page to see past book reviews as well. So take care, stay safe, stay sane, and we'll talk again real soon. Bye for now.